Hello everyone, this is Alan Necessary with Appalachian Bass. You know, I get a lot of, asked a lot of times, it's like, why should I use your baits? Why Appalachian Baits? Well, gave me an idea to do this video. Why Appalachian Baits? First reason I'm gonna tell you is uh, price-wise, we're very competitive for everything out there on the market, very competitive. Uh, we also do something a little bit different with our baits. We don't try to imitate someone else's product uh, we try to think and take all the experience, especially that I have. Uh, I've been fishing since I'm three years old and I'm 62 years old. So I've got a lot of experience fishing for trout, crappie, bass, bluegill, uh, but mainly trout pretty much my whole life. So I've incorporated that into uh, the baits that I made, and eat our dough baits and our plastics. So the first thing I want to show you is on the plastics, why? And I'm gonna start off with one of the, the worms here. Now, you can go any of the box stores down here. You can go to Walmart, Bass Pro, uh, just about anywhere that, that carries fishing supplies. And most of their baits are gonna be three inches long uh, in their worm department. And we decided to do a two and a quarter inch worm. Now I've got both of these worms rigged uh, let me get these other baits out of the way. I got them rigged, uh, wacky rigged. And that's the way a lot of people, they'll put a sinker up above them and uh, make sure I get these sinkers about the same height so you get the same presentation. And both of these have a number 10 scud hook and you can see the size difference and you can notice right away how these worms hang. Um, so some of the worms in the three inch, you'll see they'll have collars on them and things like that. I wanted my worms to have more action, so they're more a finesse uh, worm. They got plenty of stretch, and they're made from a sinking plastic. Now, when you put these in the water, under this wacky rig, I put a sinker on there to help them get down, and you can see how they act in the water, and how much bend, and how much play they've got to them. The thing you have to remember is that most of the states that get trout stocked most of these stock trout are 10 to 12 inches long, although you do get some states that do better. And then you got some places they stock uh, bigger trout. Uh, some days the trout may want a bigger worm. Some days they may want a smaller worm. But uh, the one thing about our worm I do want to show you is, and I showed this on other videos, it has plenty of stretch to it. Doesn't tear easy, plenty of stretch. And that's a two and a quarter, and that color is bubble gum. Um, we also incorporate the same plastic into our minnows and our crickets. Now, our minnow size that I chose was a two inch, and it's got a little split tail on it. And the reason I like a two inch is one, the size of the trout, but also you can use this on crappie. You can even catch bluegill on this. Perch love it, yellow perch love it. Uh, so there's a variety of species that can handle this two inch minnow, all right? Um, now I know Berkeley puts out a two and a half inch minnow and a lot of people like them, but the number one complaint that, that when I was developing this was, and I've used the, the Berkeley products myself before I started, uh, I missed a lot of trout on it. And the reason for, you know, you got 10 or 12 inch stock trout, that two and a half inch minnow, a lot of times is a little bit too big, especially if you're, fishing uh, swift water and they just come up and grab the tail of it. This is just a little bit smaller profile. It's also thinner in the body and that little tail goes crazy in the water. I mean, it's just paddling just, just like that. So you see how it can do under a float. I mean, you can twitch it, you can jig it and that's on a 132nd jig head. You can go lighter if you need to. Uh, the one thing that's really been hot here lately is our crickets. Now you can go to the big box stores and you can find crickets. I saw a two pack the other day and I'm telling you, you could tell by looking at them, they were just stiff as a board. Once again, using the finesse plastic and these legs dance, they move around and it doesn't take very much current and movement to make those little legs twitch like that crickets alive. And that's one thing that really produces, it's a small, uh, just like a, you'd find out there in the garden, we, we got them in different colors, but they're small and are more realistic than what you can find in the big box stores. So that's the why Appalachian baits on our plastics. Now on our dough baits, 
that's what we started off with. And I have people say, you know, you got to refrigerate it. That's why I'm not saying your fish, uh, dough bait won't catch fish, but you got to refrigerate it. Well, when you buy a dozen or 18 night crawlers at Walmart, do you throw them in the back of your truck for four or five days in the direct sun? When you go down and buy two, two dozen of crappie manners, do you leave them in the bucket in the back of the truck for three days and expect them to be alive? No. So the dough baits, you can take, keep them out there and fish with them five to seven days. You just keep them in the cool and uh, you can take care of them like that and you throw them in the refrigerator and if deer season comes up, you can throw them in the freezer if you're not gonna fish for a while. Get ready to go fishing, bring them out, believe it or not. You can hold that bottle in your hand for about two or three minutes or just you know, put it in a truck or put it in your pocket on your way to where you're going fishing. By the time you get there, guess what? It's thawed out enough, you can start fishing with it. But uh, like I said, all I can give you a hundred reasons why to use Appalachian baits. But the thing is, it's not about what I like, it's not about what you like, it's about what the fish like. And people are finding out that when everybody's down here throwing Joe's flies and everybody's down here throwing power bait or everybody's using corn, the trout get used to it quick. And that's where we give you some different baits that's going to get you those fish. I have fished behind people a lot and caught fish using just my baits. And I'm, you know, I'm not saying everybody run out there and get them, but I'm telling you this right now. If you don't give us a try, you're probably missing out. But this is Alan Necessary with Appalachian Baits. I just hope you've enjoyed this video. Like it, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that little bell. You hit that little bell, every time we put out a new video, you'll get an alert. This is Alan Necessary with Appalachian Baits. See you on the creek bank.